Hi there, my name is Mayra and I'm the founder of Awakening Games and in this video I will be talking about making it okay to trigger other people. This is especially dedicated for people pleasers and you know people that are empaths and highly sensitive people, <laughs> healers. <laughs> People that want to change the world, heal the world, love everyone. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so, why I want to create this video? Well, look, I believe that as long as we're wanting to grow through triggers and embrace the growth you know, mentality and mindset instead of the survival mindset, we need to be okay that others can take care of their own as well. Because what happens in the spiritual journey, on the healing journey usually, we have been wounded so much to the extent that we're wanting to caretake on how everybody else feels and we think we need to be responsible on how they feel and we take it to the extent that we're not genuine and we have actually decided for them before we even ask them. And this is the actual opposite of vulnerability when we don't want others to get triggered. It's kind of a, a very uh, deceitful way of control. We are actually minimizing the other person, making them small, not making them capable of taking care of their own emotion. We have decided, right, pre-decided. I don't even know if that word exists, but you know what I mean. We have actually made a decision for them that they're not capable of taking care of themselves that we um, have an agenda behind what it is we're saying, like we, we, will, we, we will hurt them if we tell them what hurts us. We will hurt them if we share with them what we need. You know, we will harm them. So this is the energy we, we go to, uh, we go with when we are not wanting to trigger others. And this is not a way to help create connection, deep connection. This does not allow us to become vulnerable. Now, just a small parenthesis before I continue with this video. My name is Maron. I'm the founder of Awakening Games. And I'm creating game shops at the moment, which are online courses, basically, which I call game shops because my method is a game that we play with ourselves to unlock our subconscious and integrate it with the conscious. So through the body and with embodiment exercises, heal the trauma and project the reality that we have now become from within. Taking into accountability and respect of our ego, our divine feminine, our divine masculine energies within. And through these practices, sacred practices, becoming the love we're looking for. So please uh, stay tuned. I will be posting in, under every description box of every video on YouTube. And if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Find me on social media. If you want to, I'd love to find you there as well. So more on our topic of not being afraid to trigger others and actually allowing for that to happen because I think that we go from one extreme to the other. It's, you know, and, and the thing is, the funny thing, the weird thing is that if we are too concerned of not triggering the other person, we don't allow them the space to heal through their trigger. This is really weird, but it's true. It's as if we're creating a closed circuit that is making us entangled in a way that is enmeshed. That I'm responsible for you as you are responsible for me. And this is coming from a trauma bond. This is not coming from love. And one would say, yeah, but you cannot be neglectful and not uncaring for, not, not caring for other people. And I would say, of course you can't. And in order to shift this, one would first need to become fully responsible for themselves. But as long as there's a thought that they're also responsible for the other person, we cannot attain that 100% access of our own responsibility for self. And therefore, we're, we're actually, um, you know, kind of pulling onto this old energy and dragging it into our future of codependent and enmeshed energies. So... We need to make it okay to also be bad and unliked and unwanted and rejected and abandoned if we want to be authentic. Do you know what I mean? It's not purposely, it's not purposely doing something to harm another, but it's actually allowing to also not be pleasing, nice, overly, overly protective, and you know, goody 
goody good shoes. If you allow to also be, you know, uh, raw and not kind, what will happen? You know, because we're usually doing it for a selfish reason. We don't want to lose love. It's it's very entangled. So until we actually go from the, because you know, as people pleasers, we're actually on the one side of the spectrum where we are not letting anybody in. We have a facade. We're just, you know, step, stepping on our tip, tippy toes and trying to, or walking on eggshells around everyone because we're trying to be, you know, to avoid getting triggered and triggering others. And this is not allowing us to grow. And I think this is the title of the video, why people pleasers don't grow. They get stuck and they wait. I've done that for so long in my life and I don't want to do it anymore. And I don't want you guys to do it. Uh, as long as you're listening to the video, I really hope this video helps you open up your eyes and see that what we're wanting for us is coming from love. So if I'm welcoming a trigger for myself, then I should be open to being okay to sharing a trigger with you. Because this means that I'm actually allowing for this connection, right, to be tested. And that after this, you know, triggering moment, we don't know if we're going to continue together or not. We might... We might not. And this is actually really walking with our hearts wide open, not with the control and the ego attachments. You know what I mean? So it needs courage to not be liked, to not be wanted, to be ignored, to be, you know, rejected and abandoned and made wrong or called selfish. It needs guts to allow another person to dislike us. <laughs> How about if from today we allowed everybody around us to be so free that they could actually not like us and that could be safe. And if that's okay, then think about how free we are, how free they are, and how much we have healed our abandonment and rejection wound, how much we've grown, how much we choose growth over control and over attachment and over being stuck and getting stuck in our trauma and pulling it with and dragging us into every connection, right, in our lives. How about if it's okay to trigger and get triggered? How about that? 